Okay, I want to spread a bit of love for Dino Mamria. I've been basically working on the manager profiles for the anti-post course. Um, and it's only when you identify a manager's personality type that you begin to really appreciate the work that they've done because you can you can you know the perspective that they're coming from and what it is they're trying to achieve. I mean, aside from that, anyway, um, Stevenage last season were incredible, really, to get to 70 points, just one point off the playoffs, despite the fact that they were posting really really poor shot data they had one of the they had one of the lowest budgets in the division you know they didn't have an awful lot going for them at the beginning of the season it didn't seem anyway you look at the shot data and you know it, it didn't look too impressive they looked like a team that should have been right in the thick of a relegation battle for much of the campaign um but they just kept picking up results and nobody really understood how and i just think mamory is the factor i just think he's he, there's an x factor to him there's an edge to him um, he leads with extroverted intuition. Um, I mean, we're, talk we're talking about a guy here who grew up in, in the desert in southern Tunisia. He, he was born in a tent, grew up in a tent in the first few years of his life. And even just to play in the Tunisian top flight, he became, he, you know, supposedly became the first player from southern Tunisia from the desert to play in the Tunisian top flight. So straight away, there's somebody who's, who's, who's breaking new barriers and, and break, you know, uh, pushing the boundaries uh, early in his life. You know, he's been spotted by a Burnley scout, ended up coming over to Burnley, and he's built a career over here um, in football and just kind of hung around in football for what you know, trying to get whatever jobs he can. He's ended up at Stevenage under Graham Wesley, and he's just built his own career from from that, and. I just think he's a bit of a formidable force um, and you know he he's, his decision making process is introverted feeling authenticity um, and it's very much evident in his approach you know he's, he's a manager that puts people's noses out of joint um, and you know he's a bit of a pantomime villain which is why I say you know spreading a bit of love for Dino Mamria because there's not a lot out there people generally don't you know generally don't like him because he, he you know this pantomime villain thing he gets people's backs up his touchline behavior the way he carries on with himself sometimes but when you see where he's come from and what he's achieved in the game and I think also underrated is you know what he's done tactically um, with, with Stevenage towards the end of last season they were fortunate enough to get Elias chair from QPR on loan and that was a bit of a game changer for their season um, but you know the, the, the way he struck upon the formation towards the end of the season he kept trying things he kept trying to see how he could make it work best and it was basically I believe Ilias chair as a number 10 behind Curtis Guffrey then Guffrey was right among the goals towards the end of the season um, I think he scored something like seven in the last six games and we talk about the other teams towards the top of the table not having much mental strength um, and you know just dropping points whenever opportunities came their way to achieve their objectives now Stevenage looked like the playoffs were beyond them you know by the end of March and and every single week Manry was never giving it up he was never he was never throwing in the towel on that playoff bid even when it looked so unlikely and they finished the game uh, they finished the season with I think it was five wins and a draw from the last six matches to finish one point behind Newport on the on the final day of the season and they just kept going and going and going relentless at the end of the season when it was you know when Summit was there potentially up for grabs for him and he was not for one second writing it off and I think that relentlessness that that belief rubbed off on his players uh, and I think that's a big part of what he's what he's about it's a big part of what authenticity is about what introverted feeling is about it's about motivation and desire it's about tapping into what it is that makes individual players tick and you know just just igniting the fire in, in players bellies and I think Mamria does that really really well and I think it's going to be really difficult next season for Stevenage to replicate you know the, the standards of last season and I think it's it, it's one of those seasons that could really go under the radar because you've got Newport finish one point ahead and you know rightly lauded for their achievements obviously had an FA Cup run alongside it but Newport got into those playoffs and got to Wembley, only finished one point above Stevenage. Budget's very similar. I'd argue that Newport had the better players, even though 
the budget was similar. I think they, they recruited better and, and attracted better players. Flynn was obviously a year into his a year into his tenure, so he had that advantage as well. Whereas, you know, Mamria has basically achieved almost the, 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 the same end result at the end of the season. Yeah, he'll just be quickly forgotten and it's going to be so hard for him to replicate it again this season. Um, so I just think it's one of those things that's worth acknowledging. And I think there's a job out there for him somewhere. Um, you know, in my, in my mind I get the impression that I think a good place for him would be... You know, you, you look at that League One relegation battle last season of 10 or 12 teams. You get a club where the foundations are okay... Everyone accepts what Mamre is all about, and although his behaviour can seem quite erratic at some times, it is perfectly in line with his personality, and the way his personality should be. He's a great version of himself, and a very, a very ambitious, driven man. And I think for the right club, where it's all gone a bit stale, and the, the fans aren't particularly excited, because these days, you know, there's a lot of inequality in football, some teams are just destined to finish lower mid-table, whether they like it or not. And in those scenarios, I think the fans just need... I think they just need to feel like they're being part of something and like something's happening. And I think with Mamria and his, his manner and the way he gets opposition, you know, opposition supporters and managers and players wound up or, you know, the, 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 the buttons that he presses with people's inner feelings get, gets people wound up. I think, it, I think it can generate some life in a club where, where not much is happening. And I can kind of see him taking one of them lower mid-table League One jobs. And this is a manager who, who given that opportunity, could really, could really you know, mount a top six push out of a, out of a club like that by just, by just the will of his personality. Um, so so I, th I just thought it was something worth mentioning because I think he's a character that will not... who doesn't get much credit for what he does. And I just think... What he did at Nuneaton in the non-league, by all accounts, where they went on this tremendous run for a big portion of the season, and what he did that last season at Stevenage. Um, you know, the football doesn't seem to be... You know, you look at the underlying performance data and you wonder what's behind it, and I just think it's a force of personality of, of, a, of a manager who really knows how to get the best out of players, but at the, at the beginning of him starting a new job, at a club that doesn't know what he's all about, like Stevenage do, I would imagine that he's a lot to handle at the beginning. Uh, I use Harry Kuehl as an example last season at Notts County. He went in, similar personality, ENFP. He went in pushing all sorts of buttons, uh, you know, in his press conferences, seeing how players reacted to the way, you know, one week he'd be slating them, the next week he'd be praising them, the next week he'd be blaming the referee. Just trying all different types of things in the way that, you know, just to see how people reacted and to see, to, to judge people's characters and then get to know, right, who am I working with? Who can I trust? Who's, who's going to react well to, you know, certain cues and, and what have you? And it didn't go down well at Notts County and then Kuehl was gone long before, you know, and you've got to be able to tolerate that initial period. But once you get a manager who's got a strong sense of introverted feeling, once you get him, get things his way and he gets, he gets players that respond in the right way to what he's asking of them, then I think you can achieve, you know, incredible things. And I think that's that, that's the type of manager that Mamria is. And I just think at some stage next season, if Stevenage struggled to live up to their expectations, I think despite all his connections with the club, I think he's ambitious enough that he just couldn't handle. He couldn't handle just being lower mid-table in League Two with Stevenage and not enough happening for him. I think he's ambitious. I think he's driven. And I think if just a lower lower League One club or even just a, a League Two club with slightly better prospects came in, I wouldn't be surprised if he took the job, if he saw bigger potential, um, you know, to just drive something forward. And I don't, think it's a, I don't think he needs budget, I don't think he needs recruitment. I just, I just think he's a very underrated manager.